Y254. Imagine. Show with me, Dominic. It's another Wednesday. I hope you have been having a great week since last week. And today we have a brilliant show coming up. We are all set for great conversation, some great music. And I have got, of course, my great audience from Nibs University. Make some noise for yourself, man. Yeah, yeah all right. You can see them there. I have a guest with me. Uh, before I even mention the guest, I've got to the for the first time, we've got of one accord band performing for us for the first time here. You'll be hearing from them in a bit. And of course, the chief guest today is none other than Josephine Kulea. You might have heard her when uh, the U.S. President Barack Obama mentioned her on his state visit to Kenya in 2015 on the work that she does, and she'll be mentioning to us and telling us what she does. So make some noise for Josephine Kulea. <laughs> All right. So welcome to the Power Talk Show. You know, can go to our uh, social media handles at uh, Y254. It's on, on, on Facebook. You'll find some posts there concerning today's show and I want you to tell me what uh, what you think about today's show where you are watching from and what you what, what you think about what uh, Josephine Kulea will be mentioning or will be sharing with us and also about the performance of, of One Accord what they'll be mentioning not mentioning what they'll be singing what they'll be performing and I'll be having a conversation with the with the three people mentioned in the Bible Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego you'll be hearing from them they are members of the band and then we'll be having a conversation with them you know yeah, there are some. There have been some stories over the over the week that have touched me, and especially Le Levis. If you have heard the story about Levis or Tiano from Rongo, who reported to Form One with only two bars of soap, yeah, zero school fees and nothing else, and uh, people came up. Uh, Jalango came up and said he's going to pay the school fees, and uh, another supermarket came and said they're going to do shopping for him, and uh, people have come up to to step up for for love, and that is absolutely a beautiful thing. On the other hand, we have had other news. We have had the problem of locusts. I don't know if they've reached your place and if they have done, eat them. That's the only way to eradicate them, eat them. Stop taking pictures, just eat them. That's the way to, to deal with this thing. And we hope the new CS Munya will uh, do a better job on concerning that. Still, there are those who we are still having the conversation of people like Miguna. Miguna, by the way, what is his baptismal name? Miguna, what is his first name? I think it's Miguna. Okay. Uh, he's still having trouble with the government. Those stories are still happening. And of course, there have been other issues concerning especially the cabinet reshuffle and all the cabinet and all the political issues uh, around that. They are, they, are they signs of hope? Are they signs of the same people being recycled? We don't know. It's, a, it's up to you to make uh, your own you know, conclusion about those, that particular issue. At the same time, today we're talking about Josephine Kulea. And as I mentioned to you, Josephine Kulea does a lot. She'll be mentioning to us what she does. She's a children's rights activist. She'll be telling us what she'll be, she talks about. But one of the things that inspires me about her is, is that you can do something for the community in spite of you, the status of your economy or, you know, uh, the, the money you've got or even the education you have, you can start doing something for the people in your immediate community. And that's what she has been doing for girls and she'll be telling us for how long she has been doing that and when. So I encourage you, one of the ways that you can increase your own happiness instead of just staying and complaining about the situation you're in is getting out of your comfort zone and volunteering and community engagement and trying to do in your neighborhood, in your youth groups, in, the, in church or the places where you worship. You can try to see what you can do to, to create a change in your community. And you'll be hearing how you can do that by listening to the story of Josephine Kulea. Anyway, go back to our, to our Facebook page, Y254 channel, and tell us where you're watching from, what you think about of one accord, about the conversations we'll be having with Josephine Kulea. Now, even you can send a, a shout out to the audience from Nibs Technical University as we continue this conversation. Right now, I want you to enjoy one piece from uh, of one accord, and then I'll be having a conversation with them later. So, of one accord will take us through during this first uh, performance. Go for it. Understanding 
of the mysteries of the Almighty. I am nothing without love. Take them to the south and take them to the north and make you fight. He gives us names, he gives us boundaries, yeah. You black, you white, you come back, he cool you, you lose water, eat. Hey, hey, with our love. Love, 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 love. I can't run with all the wrong and wrong. But God is love, he makes the world go round. Love. So we could live as one, as one people with one Savior. So do we, we which are eyeball is We are brother for brother, nation for nation. Hey, we are children of one God. And it's and not, it's 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 not,
Ikenga. He has a he has a he has a an AKA almost confused me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then we have Nashon Agua. Nashon. Yeah, Nashon. Nashon. Yes. Oh wow. Nation. So when you say you started in high school, yep. does it mean you're in the same high school? Like all not the really. Oh. Um, I don't know. One, two, and there's another one in Kisumu right now. Mm -hmm. In one high school. Okay. Uh, Karura. All right. Karura is there. Um, uh, it started just as a you can you see when when you start singing that like just making jokes when you sing in church and uh, after that we, uh, they realize that oh there could be guys who can sing and can sing something that has some content in it and in it that is how we we that is how they just saw that there's there's something in this singing that we can at least we can take it to the next level absolutely and that is uh, preaching the word of God mm -hmm. preaching the love of God that was our key role and still is. Mm -hmm. So the main purpose of, of one accord is preaching God's love so that guys, so that people in the world can come back to God, can realize that Kumbe God is love. Absolutely. And he can do great things. So you guys have a great role. message and you have great voices. Make some noise for these people, huh? All right. So I'll be talking to you more in your second second piece, all right? So welcome to the show, and that is absolutely amazing. Thank we are you. loving it, all right? Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're enjoying of One Accord's music. That was amazing. Uh, they're singing about love and how love is important to make the world go round and about uh, the importance of getting back to God, as uh, they have mentioned to us, as they have shared with us. As I'm, I've told you today, we're having a conversation about being at the service of love. And my guest today is Josephine. Doctor, I have to, I, I, I miss that. Dr. Josephine Kule. Yeah, Dr. Josephine Kulea, I mentioned to you, she's a child rights activist. She'll be telling us more, more about herself. Uh, right now, before we go, into the, we go into the interview itself, I want you to watch this small clip of what uh, the former U.S. President Barack Obama on his state visit to Kenya in 2015 said about her. So it's a one-minute clip on, uh, you can watch so that you continue with the conversation hereafter. That's the kind of young leadership that we need. I'm hopeful because of a young woman named Josephine Kulea. So Josephine founded Samburu Girls Foundation, and she's already helped to rescue over a thousand girls from abuse and forced marriage and helped place them in schools. A member of the Samburu tribe herself, she's personally planned rescue missions to help girls as young as six years old. And she... Okay, so just that small clip uh, tells you about my guest today. That uh, she has done so much that she has been recognized all the way by the U.S. president. And uh, I want us to have that conversation. I'll be telling you how many awards she has. I think she, they have listed them here. They are like 10 or something. Uh, we, I'll, I'll be reading them out to you. But anyway, welcome to the show, first of all. Asante sana. How are you enjoying this? Great. So Did you enjoy the, 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 the one? Oh, uh, yes. So beautiful, I right? drifted to sleep. Yes, I asked you to do something and then you and forgot, forgot because you're I'm listening like, to the... Yes, yes. No, you know Barack Obama. I do. Stop joking. Even the wife, Michelle. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. well, so you're not, uh, like, you're not even going to be humble about this. <laughs> you no. don't only know the you, Barack Obama, you also know the wife. I know the wife. And the two kids. I'm not really. You, you, you've not met the two kids, but you know at least the couple, huh? Yes, I met the couple at Washington, D.C. Okay, when okay. We went for a young leaders forum in oh, the, the US. Yali. Ah, Yes, we were ah. the pioneer class of 2014. So before 2015, you had not actually uh, got into. We into met in 2014 in Washington, D.C. Ah, okay, so okay. 2015 was him just coming to tell you guys, I also know Josephine. <laughs> I've met her, yes. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, it, it's nice. Yeah? Thank you. You'll be telling us a little bit about that. Now, you are a child activist, all right? So, yes. and uh, uh, a child activist in where, first of all? First of all, where? And then we talk about exactly what you do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I come from Samburu County. Ah, Suba. <laughs> Suba Oleng. Suba Oleng. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. From Samburu. Yes. So uh -huh. Samburu is a community. It's also a county. Uh, because many people, every time I say I'm from Samburu, and they're like, uh, is that a place or the people? I'm like, it's both. So it's Samburu County. It's a, uh -huh, it's a place it's and It's a place people. and mm. it's a people. Mm 
Uh -huh. We are also mass speakers. We are three mass speaker community speaking communities in this country. That's the Maasai, the Samburu, and the Jems so in Baringo. Jem, Jems, I'm a Chamus. Chamus. Uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. what you are saying is Maasai is not a language. Maasai is a community. Who Ma speak is the Ma language. is the language. So Ma, the Maasai speak Ma. Yes, Maasai speak Ma. Samburu speak Ma. Then the Chamus speak Ma. And I thought here, I'm a Kenyan. Okay. <laughs> So yeah. the the Samburu, the Maasai, and the Jems. Yes, Jems. Huh? Yeah. They are the ones who speak Ma. Okay. Yes. And you come from the Samburu community I come from of the, the three. Samburu community. Uh -huh, okay. We are in the northern part of the country. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, uh, what has uh, put you in prominence in uh, world prominence is what you have done over years, huh? and that is child uh, activism. Yes. And you have been fighting FGM. Uh, you have been rescuing girls from early marriages, mm -hmm. and you have been uh, rescuing girls who have been beaded, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's part what you do. Yes. Could you could you tell us more about this and especially what beading is all about? Yeah, so mm -hmm. Samburu Girls Foundation is an NGO. We are based in Samburu. We rescue girls, as you've rightfully said, uh, mm -hmm. from child marriage. When I say child, it's children, literally. We have girls between the ages of 8 to 12 years who are the majority uh, who get married at that age. Pause there. Yes. A girl between 8 to 12, 12. is married? Yes. Wow, okay. So we get them out of uh, that and enroll them to schools. And uh, in the Samburu community, FGM is also done on the day of the wedding. So most girls are cut on their wedding day. And the uh, FGM is 86% in Samburu community. We are the second highest in Kenya after the Somalis. And uh, that goes hand in hand with child marriage. If the girls are cut on the day of the wedding, then that's what happens. So basically, it's a, it's a, it's it's what can I say? It's a child abuse, but also it's cultural because pe we, our community practices because uh, it's part of our culture. Because mm -hmm. even the older men explain it as we found it being done, we are still doing it. But now with the laws, mm -hmm. uh, the laws in Kenya against that, so we are trying to educate them that uh, the. Children, uh, marriage of children are below 18 years, and also cutting of the girls is not allowed anymore by the law. So we need to stop. Mm -hmm. So we create awareness and also try to protect the girls. So th that issue becomes beading. Beading comes from the word beads, mm -hmm. and uh, that is where uh, the girls who are not going to school, who are also many, are not. Uh, we are 78 percent illiterate as a county, so we have uh, children, mostly uh, girls who are not going to school are bought beads, and uh, in some parts of Samburu the Morant, we know we have the Morant, mm, they are called yeah. uh, these, these are young men, boys are circumcised at around 15, 15. then they'll have 10 to 15 years of being a youth, then they'll start marrying, yes, maybe so from 25 or 30 years So between, so they are, they are, they are circumcised the boys, so wait, for, wait, wait this is something that's you know fascinating so the boys are circumcised, circumcised at, at 15, 15 yes. but the girls are circumcised between the age of 8 and 12. Girls are circumcised anytime they are getting married so and a, a good number of these are getting yes, married between, between 8 and 12. Eight, yes 8 to 15 also are right there oh, wow. so okay. and uh, the boys will wait until they finish their moranhood so they gra graduate to become men and that's when they're allowed to marry which is about a decade later yes, around 15 10 years yeah, 10 15. 15 years depending okay. on the age group mm -hmm. so what happens is those morans some of them who who are not of course some a few go to school most are not going to school so some of those are not going to school are allowed to buy beads mm -hmm. and and uh, they put it around the girl's neck and in exchange for sex and it's official so and the community knows accepts, that and accepts that yes so the girl ends up getting pregnant and this, some of these children are not wanted actually all children out of that union are not wanted the union is official but the children are not wanted so there is the the girls end up going through crude abortions or sometimes they wait for them to give birth they kill the children. So we also rescue these kind of girls either before they get pregnant or during pregnancy or when they have given birth so that the babies are not killed. Oh wow. Yes. So So wait, wait, this is this is so beading is like booking a girl for sexual purposes. Yes, not for marriage. Not this, for marriage. This guy will not marry this girl. Because now because they'll be they'll be it's like dating within your clan, and you're not allowed to marry a girl from your clan. And at the end of the day, you'll marry from another clan. 
So this girl can be married by another guy, but you cannot marry her. As you cannot guy is marry her, her. Yeah. even though you have been having sexual yes. intercourse with so her for 15 yes. years. Yes, which is not even possible because you'll be married any minute. Oh, wow. <laughs> and if she gets she gets she gets pregnant, she is forced She's, to have yes, the baby is uh, not to have wanted. an abortion. And if she gets a kid, the kid, the, the children are not uh, uh, you know yes. wanted in the community. Yes. Okay, that is insane. Yes. I have to say, so, wow. so, so, so you want to rescue these girls? We take them out of that situation, we put them in, uh, we have a rescue center in a place called Losuk. Uh, it's like half an hour drive from Maralal town, which is the headquarters of the county, and we, uh, we house them there, feed them, clothe them take care of their health and uh, enroll all of them to schools and uh, so far we've rescued 1,200 girls and 1, we are directly supporting 400. No, good for you man, hey, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> 1,200 girls, okay? Yes, uh -huh. and we are currently educating 441 from preschool to high uh, to university levels. And what you have done together with your team is to get uh, sponsorship for all these people? Yes. So you have taken, you said 400? 41. 441. Yes. And you are going to ensure that they are educated all the way from primary from school pre to high school? University. To university. To university, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> We have 32 girls in university right now. As we speak, we have 15 girls joining from one. So my team is busy enrolling them this week. Oh, wow. That's yes. brilliant. Yes. Did you yourself, uh, I have to ask you this, did you yourself experience any of the three? The, we said there are three. FGM, early child marriage, and... Uh, uh, what, what did bidding. you call bidding? Or yes. bidding? So all girls who go to school do not experience bidding because classroom is like a safe, a safe net. Environment, uh -huh. Yeah. So if you're not in school is when you get bidded. But I went through FGM because even during our time there were no laws to protect us from FGM. FGM laws are just yesterday, 2012, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the FGM laws were passed. Though it was in the Children Acts mm -hmm. of uh, 2001, but uh, no one had noticed because it's hidden in the, uh, in the yeah. writings. Okay. But um, I went through FGM. I also g got married young, so I am a mother of two. From <laughs> from that part particular situation. Yes. So, but I I, I am uh, I am a proud mother of a boy and a girl. So basically, what I say is uh, what my experience made me learn that it's wrong to marry children. It's wrong to to take girls through FGM because it's not beneficial. And when the laws were passed, I think I got the strength to fight for the girls in my community because I believe if our community understands that it's wrong to cut the girls, then they will get it that the, the, the laws were passed to protect the children. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means they should just let the girls be. So that's the message we're trying to pass across and trying to show them that these girls can still get married without being cut. And the girls can get uh, what uh, because they have this belief that if you're not cut, you'll not get a husband. So they don't even need to be married among the Samburus. They can be married elsewhere. Absolutely. So, so mm -hmm. we are just trying to bring uh, like uh, uh, awareness among the communities and mm -hmm. of course promoting education because education is our biggest uh, program where we want to use education as a tool to change the attitudes of the community towards girls. And, and, and the work is said, you said it's 78% illiterate? Yes, 78% illiterate. The, that's your, that's the whole county. The whole county yes. is 78% illiterate. Yes. That means 78 people cannot read or write. Yes. It's a huge number. Yes, it's huge. So uh, your work is cut out for you. And <laughs> well, it's a lot. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, yeah, you, you, but we're trying. Yeah. You're doing amazing Thank work you. already. Yeah? So that's uh, absolutely amazing. One of the things you say is that your mom inspired you in what you do. Yes. How, how did she inspire you to do this? So when I was growing up, I grew up in a typical village. Uh, my first classroom was under a tree, and my mom was the most learned woman in the village because she went up to Form 2 and was taken out of school to be married by my dad as a third wife. So being the only educated woman in the village, she was made a teacher. So she was our teacher, our nursery school teacher. She took me along and we go under that tree and she, we, you know, we learn. Mm -hmm. And then the next school available was 42 kilometers away. And uh, it was a boarding school. That was class one. So I had to leave every opening and closing. I have to walk the 42 kilometers to go to boarding school. Wait, yeah. wait, walk? Yes, 42 kilometers. It's not far. You can walk. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying it's not far? <laughs> Uh, ni karibu sana. Sasa unapitana na andovu hivi, you just 
So you take only elephant. one hour fifty nine minutes, huh? To, well, to yeah, in your challenge. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh -huh. we we loved it. You know, we grew up seeing all this wildlife on our way to school, and then you just you're taught that when an elephant comes, you you go to the opposite direction of the of the wind so of that it doesn't, doesn't smell you. So we, we yeah, well, all kinds of wildlife would meet with them on the road to school. And what do you mean all kind of wildlife? Yeah. You meet a, a lion and you say, okay, I'm going to go now. Yes, and you're like, don't, don't, as long as you don't disturb them, they will not disturb you. So anyway, we enjoyed going to school then. Oh, there were no okay. matatus. <laughs> uh -huh. Then uh, uh, my mom used to, like, help so many girls go to school from my village. So they would come stay in our house. And uh, my first rescue case was actually when I was in class Four is when I, I left Samburu to go to study in Meru in a boarding school. We were being sponsored by the church then, Catholic Church, to go to school because mm -hmm. Catholic Church was our first government. It was it built schools, hospital, hospitals for us. So that is how we, I was, even the boarding school I went to was man, being my, run by a Catholic school. And uh, the priest was in charge. Uh, my classmate in class four was getting married. And uh, she, he rescued her and said, "Can you take this girl away from here so that she's not uh, married off?" Mm. And so they had, they needed someone to accompany, and I, I was able to leave Samburu to Meru to a school called Materi Girls, mm -hmm. and that's where I went to my class five with the with the, with the other girls. And then by class eight, this girl was still married because the priest had left. The, the, this our area then mm, so okay. so no one rescued after class eight because we had to, there was that time I got the results mm, then you mm, go to form one mm. so she was unlucky she still got married after class eight so I was lucky to go back because my mom fought for me mm -hmm. my mom my dad died when I was in class six and yeah, mm. and uh, my mom mm, refused to be inherited because they have a, a, a there they say they bless the man for you, for you what, so you're literally being inherited by another guy. So my mom refused so that she would fight for us mm -hmm. and my sisters. And so she ensured that I went to high school and I went back to Materi Girls because they still had a very good high school. And uh, so while I was there, actually, uh, in, in when I went there first in class five, I, um, I had a cousin who was bedded now in our village. And I, I kept telling my mom, this girl needs to go to school. Because when I went to Meru, my mind was open. Mm -hmm. was like, why is this community different? Why are they not marrying off girls? Why are there so many girls in school here? So I kept asking myself so many questions. So I, I actually uh, went home. Uh, every time I break from school, I would go help her to look after cows and goats, and I would teach her to read and write. And she was very brilliant, and I told my mom, this girl must go to school. And when the school term came, they were hesitating. They were like, what do we tell them? And I'm like, no, this girl must go to school. She either goes to school or I don't go to school. And then they saw I'm serious. <laughs> so they, they, they cut off the beads and bought a uniform. That girl became the first girl since preschool. Best girl in her, 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 I mean her county now in uh, class eight, mm -hmm. and best uh, the top hundred students with A that time. Oh she was wow. in the newspaper. Oh wow, As that's we speak nice. right now, she's a medical doctor. She's a medical doctor. Yes. Good for her. Yeah. So I think that childhood passion of seeing girls going to school kept going in me, and. Um, even uh, I went to I have a medical background. I went to college, came back, worked for my community in a hospital, and I I I I, I, con I continued rescuing the girls, putting them in my house, paying them their school fees with my salary. I actually the, the, the my other rescue was my own cousin. So I had literally started my my family. Ten year old was getting married. I took the girl, went to the police. I had to wear a combat to to disguise myself from my uncles. <laughs> you, 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 you appeared yes, to them like. A, yes. like and, and my uncle kept saying, there's a tall Askar, he looked like Josephine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I told, because I had to identify the house. So mm. basically, I, I, I mean, we rescued the girl, took her to school. The, uh, one day later, I get a phone call. There was a wedding at your uncle's. I'm like, but I have the bride who got married. And they said it was the, young, the younger sister who was barely oh, seven years old. Because seven. A girl had to go. They didn't want to refund the cows, but <gasps> any girl should, must be married. So they had to take the seven-year-old. They took her through FGM and married her. So now it was worse because I'm like, I have the bigger one, the smaller one is gone. So uh, we had to go back with the police and rescue the, young, the smaller girl. So we, I went back home, took her also, 
and and we took the girl to school and uh, the, the the guy was arrested unfortunately that is what happens when they they, they, they do that to children but uh, I think it's been difficult for my community to accept that it's illegal so I at the at the beginning they didn't understand because even the old men then who are my uncle's age mates had to like have a ceremony to curse me because I am doing the wrong things to the community. A ceremony to curse you? Oh yes, it was not a laughing matter. But later when the girls went to school and now they are almost done with their high school because literally when I took them they had to start preschool again. So, yeah, because they have never been to mm. school. So they, 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 the younger one is now in form four. Yeah, they are both in the same class. So. When I went back, they were celebrating because when they came after class, they had to mm -hmm. do a blessing ceremony now to bless to me, the to remove the curse and to appreciate that I mm. educated their girls. So, and in the larger community, that is what has been happening because mm -hmm. we've had so many other children that we've rescued from now. Other, because I I moved from paying the um, school fees with my own sal small salary. Mm. I had to register the NGO to just to reach out to more children the and also Girls Foundation, foundation mm. and to also reach out to the whole community. Wow. So that's how I, 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 we were able to come up with the Samburu Girls Foundation to ensure that these girls are safe and they are going to school. I think we should give you a round of applause because, <laughs> man, amazing! Come on! Thank you. So, mm -hmm. uh, there is, there, I'm still curious about some part. So in, in this part, w you, when you got married before you went to Materi, or what happened to you <laughs> as an individual, if I may ask? Or you want us to skip that? I never discussed that part Okay, of okay, the fine, fine, fine. I'm, I'm not going to ask that part. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I quite understand that. So now, one of the things that you went through is the elders cast you and then they bless you. Mm -hmm. Now, do you find unconditional support? Uh, so there's been, uh, at the beginning, there's been lots of resistance because people didn't understand what actually I was mm. driving to. Mm -hmm. But now with so many girls going to school and performing, we've had girls graduating from uh, clinical medicine, others are nurses, others are now completing their uh, university, as I've said. So the community have come to appreciate that this thing is helping them. It's not, as they put it, like I'm fighting culture. Because uh -huh. I always tell them that our culture is 99% beautiful. But the 1% that is not beautiful is the one that is harming the, the women and girls. So I, I, I try to, to show them through actions because mm -hmm. you know sometimes saying is different from seeing. Correct, when correct. they see now the mm -hmm. girls and they are happy and mm -hmm. they are talking even about uh, empowering the girls. We uh, girls boot football team has been one of the best in the Chapadimba. Last year they made it up to national levels. They were second best in the country. Oh wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And the two uh, two are picked to, to go to a trip in Spain. We had the best scorer in the country and the best, uh, the, uh, what is it called, the best uh, player and the best scorer and the whole Chapadimba. So the two of them joined the team, team that was taken to, by Safari come to Spain. So we're also trying to use sports yeah, to, uh -huh. uh, to, to, to check in our two. <laughs> <laughs> so we also want to use sports to mm. like... Um, remove the negative energy from the girls and also mm -hmm. from the community mm -hmm. and see these mm -hmm. girls performing Correct. and uh, see just build their we have girls who are modeling we have girls you know we are trying to patch their talents and also show them there is another way to life than just books books and if you don't even if you don't do so well there's technical colleges thank god now there's even tv mm -hmm. and offering mm -hmm. partial scholarships Correct. so we appreciate because uh, now the support has increased uh, than before and now even uh, relatives, especially the mothers, are reporting their girls and they're going through issues because they don't want them to go what, through what, what they, they went through. Uh, yeah, the, the cousins, especially the boys, I'm so happy the youth are rescuing their own sisters. And they're like, I'm going to So, yeah, so I Actually, that's, that's what I wanted to ask, you yes. know, because you say the, the one of the big issues is the Morans after their circumcision, right? And before yes. they, you know, they become full Morans. Yes. Those years, you know. So I was actually wondering, what are you doing with these young men so that they understand that what they do is no longer, you know, yeah. proper? So we have an outreach program, and we try to reach the community as much as we can. But, you know, uh, in the NGO world, everything depends on resources. So if I have a little resource, sometimes we prioritize the girls' education. Because you can't go around the community uh, creating awareness while the girls are not going to school. Yeah. So. Yeah. We, we, we've been doing uh, also some radio uh, through the, the local radio. We have a local radio called Syrian FM and others that uh, do not speak the local language but t 
Nigerian speaks the Longo language, so we use it to air uh, some of these issues and uh, child protection. Mm. We also get pro bono lawyers. We go to them to villages and have meetings with the women and the men uh, and the Morans too, the younger men, and tell them the, the rights of the children, their own rights, and how they're supposed to protect children and why the government has said no to these issues, Correct. just to, so that they understand. Mm. Because sometimes some of them are arrested, and when they go to court, they're ignorant about the law, and you know what they say? Ignorance, Ignorance is, is not, not defense. defense yes. So basically, if, okay. uh, uh, so what we're trying to do is, if, if my wish is only that if there was the civic education of the laws passed in this country to the local levels, to the household levels, to the, the villages, mm. then the people would understand what's happening. But Absolutely. you know, Sharia in a Nairobi, and then it does not get to the grassroots, and uh, the people do not even get to know it's illegal. And the people who are also elected to come and tell people the truth do not tell them, because they are fearing they might not be elected if they say no to FGM or not um, child marriage. Okay. So we have a battle of of law and politics. And politics on yeah, side, so correct. now we are, the, the politicians are not afraid that they might lose their seats if they say not to mm, FGM or not mm. child marriage. But I still feel like as a good leader, you must tell the people the truth, especially because it's them who went to pass the laws in parliament. Mm. Yeah. Sure, sure. Wow. Absolutely amazing. I love what you're doing. And I'm going to, before we, I call back the uh, one accord band to, you know, for one accord to, to sing again after this uh, question. You know, I want to read about read out some of your awards because mm -hmm. of what you've done. Now I know why you've got this <laughs> award. There are so many. I, w I want to read out to you. Uh, I hope you're getting inspired by Josephine Kule. And I want to read out to you her awards. She has the Unsung Hero, 2011, Head of State Commendation, 2012, now, COVAW, C O V A W, what's the what's Coalition the? of Violence Against Women? Coalition of Violence Against Women Champion 2013, Acumen East Africa Fellow 2013, UN Person of the Year, wow, 2013, Inspiring Woman by Gender Commission of Kenya 2014. Uh, Young Africa African <laughs> <laughs> Young African Leadership in Initiative. Initiative. Washington Fellow 2014, <coughs> Spark Change Maker 2015, Vital Fo Voices, Vital Voices Lead Program 2015, African Union Youth Hero 2015. 2015, right? Yes. Wow. First of all, let us, uh, sorry? But so, uh, we're going to take a short break right now. There's, there, the lady has so many awards. She's doing a lot, and uh, she mentioned she didn't come from, uh, you know, the best of backgrounds, but she's been able to make a, a huge change. And I hope you're getting inspired to look around in your own community, in your own place, and see what you can do to, to and commit to something greater than you and bring some change in that world. But before we do that, let's uh, go back to of one accord band, and they're going to give us another piece. And when we come back, I'll be reading out your comments and also taking a few questions from the audience. <laughs> Trapa na mapema, na mchala kutwa, begu za fadili, hata jioni. Tongo je asasa, siku za kuvuna, tutashangilio, wenye mavuno. Trapa na mapema, na mchala kutwa, Begu za fadhili hata jioni Tongo je asasa siku za kuvuna Tutashangilio wenye mavuno Wenye mavuno Woo, wenye mavuno Tutashangilio wenye mavuno when you mavuno, oh, when you mavuno, to the shangilia, when you mavuno, when you mavuno, oh, when you mavuno, to the shangilia, when you mavuno, when you mavuno, oh, when you mavuno. And to the shangilia, when you mavuno, 
That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, that, that bass over there, and you can you can you can hit almost any note. <laughs> Soprano, are like wow. So do you, uh, Shadrach? Do you only sing a cappella? Yes, when I sing a cappella, but uh, a little bit of some accompaniment, but uh, basically a cappella. Oh, he is the accompaniment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say that. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's so good. I mean, but you you said in your when I was speaking to you uh, previously, you said yeah. you only sing gospel. Huh? Yes, gospel. P particularly gospel. Particularly gospel. And it's really good gospel. All Thank right. You. So uh, one of the one of the most amazing things about your group is it's a men only band. Huh? Yes. It's a men only. A men only. Strictly. And if you go to any congregation, any religious congregation, the fewer people uh -huh. <laughs> are usually men. Yes. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you find particular challenges being men who are trying to come together and maybe set gospel standards in terms of how you interact with other? Other than men, it's a, it's a complex question, but feel free. Yeah, to. it's kind of hard. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can say this. Uh -huh. um, okay, challenges are there, yes. Mm -hmm. But as men, okay, tuliumbo kuka angum, you get. So um, when you see challenges like, uh, okay, how do you do? How do you do ministry? You know, when a, when a, when a woman approach, approaches somebody like, do you know God? There's that ka, ka soft voice, that kind appealing voice. But when a guy tells you like, yo, do you know God? You'll be, mm. Mm. oh yeah, Buddha. Nyaje. Mm. You see, th there's that. But, uh, A bit of suspicion. Yeah, yeah mm. something of that sort. But uh, we, we pray for the grace of God to always be with us when we, when you preach them, when you go out for ministry. And uh, God has never let us down. Powerful. Um, powerful. Yeah. You're, you're witnessing, and I think that's the, the most important thing. And yeah, uh, yeah. you're witnessing with your voices, and that is, mm -hmm. we are enjoying, you're, you're enjoying what you do. And Amen. congratulations. Right? Amen. So very good. So we continue with this on the, on the final segment. We'll be coming to, back to one uh, of one accord. They have told us, when you're Mavuno, to Shangilia. So make sure that you have Mavuno at the very end of times. And uh, let me see if there's some few comments here where, where you're watching from, okay? Uh, let me see. Okay, so we've got Lewis Morio Awajiro. Morio Awajiro, you always comment. I like Morio Awajiro. Wow, what a lively interaction. It's more than a testimony. May the Almighty shower her with favor and grace. 
ask her how we can partner with her or support her program. Okay, it's a good question. Huh? How can we people su support your program? Shout out to Nibs. Hey, especially James, Eliza, Jeff, Milka, and Julia. All right. Then Kamwana Kamobasa, watching from Mombasani. TJ, T. Jacob, T. Jacob uh, from Nakuru watching. Uh, Kamwana Kamombasa Pia watching. Shoiko Ju from Nyeri watching. That is Vero Paul. Wananse, as usual, you're watching. Okay, so keep those comments coming that are. That you still got, we'd like to read them out uh, so as uh, the show goes on. All right, so we've got uh, there are two questions. Before we go to the questions, um, there is you. You said you have a few more, you know, a few more degrees. Not the deg you have. First of all, you 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 have a doctorate from St. Paul's, okay, and some uh, some awards you said. Mm -hmm. Some more, some more words that you, you that I didn't list here. Tell me, tell me more, tell me more. I'm jealous. <laughs> uh -huh. Um, where did you reach? Actually, I, I reached <laughs> the African <laughs> Union Youth he should be hero in 2015, but okay. Okay. Uh, 2016, I had an order, I don't remember which was the name. There are but too many, you know, you've many, forgotten. But uh, 2017, I had a humanitarian award from the uh, Wellness for Women and Children. And then 2018, I had a... Uh, um, uh, called a voice for girls from uh, an NGO in Canada. It's called uh, Giants of Africa. Uh, and then 2019, what did I have last year? I had something that I don't remember. Don't, don't, don't I worry. Don't yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, so it's been a blessing, but a challenge is that um, all my awards have been non-monetary awards. And I think I told my colleagues, you know what, if you get an email saying I've been nominated for, tell them if it has no monetary value for those girls, I don't want it. Give it to other people. So so I'm tired of receiving awards. It's like oh. you're just telling me good job, Bring them to me. Bring the, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I think um, I, I there's also one you didn't mention. I got an HSC from Kibaki when he was okay. yeah, in ah. 2012. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, it's really, it's, 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 uh, it's encouraging to see when the government appreciates your efforts because mm. one of my biggest challenges is uh, fights from the politicians in my co county, especially the women politicians. Wait, what? Oh, yes. I have challenges because, as I mentioned earlier, the, 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 the politicians don't want to talk about this thing. And they don't want to, 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 you know, tell the community the truth. So they literally support these things by either not talking about them or encouraging the community to continue doing it. And it's very frustrating because these are the same people who are supposed to be telling them. Mm. The monies that come through these uh, we, uh, leadership offices should be supporting these girls, but they do not. So it's a challenge because we are trying as an organization to show the community the right way, mm. but the people who they elected to mm. lead them are showing them the wrong, yeah, way. The wrong way so too. so yeah so it's been it's been really uh, uh what, what can i call it a setback for mm -hmm. women like us who who see opportunity in those leadership offices for these girls mm -hmm. but these same uh, uh leaders don't don't see how, they, don't can see do. how mm -hmm. they can support these children or mm -hmm. they literally try to to turn the community against the work that we are doing it's actually sad when you say it's actually women who do this thing Let's take uh, two questions. We're going to take two questions from the audience. Uh, let's start with the, with the lady and then we go to the gentleman. Uh -huh. OK, my name is Mel Kamaina from Nibs College. My question to Jasmine is, what's your assigned hustle beside the protecting of the Sabur girls from FGM? OK. And how are you, how d how are you able to cope up with the challenges that mm. you face from your community? Perfect. Yeah, okay. So, Said Hazo ni gani sabu unaoneka na wewe kazi ni kusaidia tu wasichana. Ungo unatoa wapi? Wait for the next question. Uh-huh. So, I'm um, Wajege Wanjiro. Wajege from, Wanjiro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> from Nibs. Yeah. First I'd like to congratulate you mm -hmm. and actually you are going far by God's grace because uh, I think you are doing even more than ministry and I know that God is going to take you to places. So, my question to you is uh, where do we expect you? in the next coming 10 years too. And uh, Sambulu County, you know, as you know, the, the, the Sambulu and the, is backlogged. So because, you know, some people get to, the, to, a, to a point that 
you know, they try to venture into politics that is they can get to her chances. Are you also going to venture into politics? As mm. to Senator of Samburu, yeah. Eh? Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. So, thank you so much. So, Said Hassan Igani, by the way, on a serious, you said you have a medical background, right? That's what you said, yes, huh? Yes, but I, I, I can't work uh, in a day eight to five job for anyone because my work is full time. And so I literally uh, am fully dedicated to the organization. I'm the founder, I'm the director, and I can't lead a team by being away, doing mm. other high side mm. But I, I do a lot of speaking engagements, uh, both uh, nationally and internationally mostly. So I get paid to go speak to people and inspire them the way I've done uh, today. Y yes, and you've done a good job, but we are not paying. Uh, I'm waiting for my <laughs> check. So sorry. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. So um, uh, I, 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 I get. Uh, uh, we, we get also a lot of support from people who just, you know, walk up and say, I want to support 10 girls, I want ah. to take 5 girls, I want to take 1 girl, even Kenyans. And we appreciate them a lot Absolutely. because uh, those girls, it's the support that we get even from individuals that goes further than those mm. that we write proposals for. Mm. And it's tough to be in the NGO world because you're competing for funds from bigger NGOs. Like we have international NGOs even working in this country and they consider us as local NGOs, literally CBOs. They even call us CBOs. So the money yeah. goes to the big NGOs because they have the bigger names. Ah, okay. But uh, sometimes if you compare even the work that we do, we are doing bigger you, work than uh -huh, them. Than the so, okay, yeah, okay. so I think mm. for me, I'll, 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 I'll just tell the young people, it's not always also about the money. It's uh, when, you, when, when God calls you to do something, you do it. I've tried. Sometimes those girls do not have food. I want to run away. I want to lock the, the organization and tell everyone, disappear, go to your village and get married. You know, it gets frustrating, yeah. Mm. But then I, uh, every time I say that and I get a message, there's a girl who's getting married, I'm like, where? So, <laughs> so mm. I think it's just a calling because sometimes you want to give up because there's no resources. But then when you remember and you see these other, the younger ones, they are smiling and they are, so those who have succeeded, you just get encouraged to keep going. So I tell the young people, it's not always about the money. Uh, you can do a lot of, uh, of uh, lot of community work without actually even having funds. Because I remember when I was a student, I used to volunteer a lot in schools. Uh, coming even, I, literally from primary, secondary, I used to volunteer in the church to go to teach in schools. And uh, I, I've never, I've never lacked mm. because uh, the, the, at the end of the day, some of the organizations, and this is for the young people, they create voluntary opportunities. And when jobs are opened, it's up, to, uh, they give the people who are within the voluntary space because they have understood the, the system. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of our young people nowadays don't want to go and volunteer. They, they just are like, pesanga uh, you're like, okay, so you just come learn kidogo, mm -hmm. then we see how we are going to enumerate you, but it's all, they are putting money first. So for me, I would say do not put the money first because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, your talents, your uniqueness, mm -hmm. and uh, everyone has a talent. Okay. Actually, use your passion because once everyone is unique and everyone has something different that mm -hmm. they were called for. So that is something they should be able to identify. I'm being told to, we need to wind down now. Yeah. So uh, do you want to take uh, also maybe the, the young man's question? Where do you see? But and it's a very good question. Yes. Do you see yourself um, getting into the political <laughs> world? So I, I, at, at some point I had thought I should never think politics because it might not mix. But I realized in Kenya, if politics, if you want to make a difference, you, you, can, need, you need to go to politics. And also we, will need to, we need to change the bad leadership that we see mm. in politics. Mm. Then we need to go there mm. and show the example. Because at the end of the day, if we complain of bad leadership, then who are those good leaders we are waiting for? So for me, I, I, I've been contemplating on the issue and I've said, uh, for example, right now, we are talking, there is an office called the Women Rep office. That's the office that should be doing exactly the work that I do, mm -hmm. you know, and by empowering those girls, rescuing them, educating them, because there's a resource for that office. And many young people don't even know mm -hmm. that that office has funding. It has money. And uh, f f what is so sad is, uh, is, is that uh, currently, as I speak, that office is not even supporting the girls that I have in my county. So why, why uh, my, my actually in 2022, you will not be surprised if I decide to go for that to run for that office. <laughs> So anyway, we need to change leadership. Mm. I, uh, for me, my take is do not complain about the bad leadership because mm. 
everyone is complaining, most of them chose the leaders that we have. So why don't we change that leadership to what we want or try other people. If they don't deliver, then, then change. Because we complain about you, Dominique. Tomorrow we'll re-elect you again because you gave us, last election you gave, me, you gave us 50, but we elected you. Now you're giving us 100, we're bringing you back now because you gave more money. So I think Kenyans need to move from the issue of being bought, like uh, leadership ya kununuliwa, to action-based or, or uh, what is it called, results-based uh, mm -hmm. leadership and uh, self -serv I mean, uh, servant leadership. Mm -hmm. Because that's what is really lacking in this country. Mm -hmm. We have self-interested people who just want to go there, not to serve the Kenyans, but to, to serve their own interests. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Justin I am very, very happy that you ac accepted my invitation. And uh, I'm glad that you came and you have been an absolute inspiration to us. And I hope uh, to, to, you know, to host you again and again and continue the work that you're doing. And you know, uh, possibly I'm going to give you 30 seconds because now we need to wind, wind, wind down. Kabisa, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, how people can support, okay, support, I think you've mentioned how, but where can people fi find you online so yeah. they get to know about you? Yeah, we mm -hmm. have a website, www.samburugals.foundation, not .org or .com, .foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an online email, a contact number if you want to come volunteer with us it's open you can write us an email if you want to donate there's an mpesa there's a paypal for those who are online yeah, on that website oh, yes on the mm. website and uh, we we accept all kinds of donations these girls need clothes uh, they come with nothing they need food they need school fees so we accept all kinds of support mm. because at the end of the day haba na haba hujaza kibaba yes www.samburgirls.com foundation you can go there and support the the work that Josephine Kulea and her team are doing all over the country especially in Samburu County to help girls find a hope and a future I want to thank you for having been part of this show as my dear view I want to thank my chief guest Josephine Kulea for the work that she's doing hoping that she has inspired you to look into your own community and see what you can do and you can even volunteer she said with her organization as you try to figure out what God is calling you to do in your life I also want to thank God, thank my uh, my audience here from uh, Nibs Technical University, yes, yes. Thank you so much for making time to be here. And I also want to appreciate one accord. Acapella. Acapella. Okay, make some noise for them, people. Right. That's one accord. Thank you so much for being on my show. God bless you. Do have a good night and be mad. Be exceptional. Make a difference. See ya. Dr. Sinclair. Take care.
Sechinchera chumsi Eko nuge kobuga Tomoroto tomonene Vandeva semelia Sechini vochavo Vanda sechi semi Vanda seme goko Evi bien si verte Quiero ne bien si Eko nuge kobuga Tomoroto tomonene Vandeva semelia Sechini vochavo Vanda sechi semi Vanda seme goko Evi bien si verte Oye tige el ser, te vino a gozar merida, el ser goza muere, a ebe que ange, se chinchera chonsi, eco nuge cobuga, tomoroto tomonene, eco nuge cobuga, tomoroto tomonene, eco nuge cobuga, tomoroto tomonene, paparara.